Radio, and you know, as always, every Thursday night, we try to make it informative. We try to make it, um, let's just say, make you feel it. And we're going to make it plain tonight. We were blessed enough to have Brother Roland come back, and we were even more blessed to have his brother, uh, Ronald Freeman, come on and his credentials speak for themselves. And pretty much, we're just going to just do what, what, what black people do. We're just going to talk to each other, and we're just going to try to share some information. And before we get started, I, I want to say this on a personal note to the brother, because I haven't got a chance to talk to, to uh, Ronald yet. So I want to say this. You know, Garvey, you know, he gave us a, a, a sense of racial pride and a sense of ourself. Then Malcolm came along, and when Malcolm came along, he gave us a voice. But for me and, and people in my neighborhood and my community, you know, you brothers came along and gave us our manhood back. And this generation really don't know what that tastes like, what that feel like, what that smell like. So hopefully we can keep sharing light and let them understand that we have true heroes in there among us every day, and we'll have an opportunity to reintroduce them since we lost a generation or two with a lot of nonsense. And we're going to let the, uh, the Panthers Party, I put it in perspective like this. Let's take um, Gay Edgar Hoover. If you want to find Gay Edgar Hoover now, you have to go to the American Gangster series. So in the final analysis, we see who was right or wrong on that note. And let's take Chief Parker. I mean, let's keep it real. Even the white brother right. tell you that Chief Parker will make Mel Gibson look like a choir boy. So just on that note right there, you know, we're going we're to talk about some liberation, some revolution, and pretty much whatever the brothers want to talk about because they've earned that right. So, Brother brother Ronald. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I got a chance to talk to Wayne and um, got a chance to talk to Roland, and I, I just want to start it off right here, and you can take it wherever you want to take it, my brother. But, you know, I, I try to give people on the air a flavor in a sense for, you know, who Bunchy was. I mean, Roland put it so eloquently, and, you know, and, and Wayne put it in his perspective. Can you just take us there first and then go wherever you want to go, my brother? Let him yeah, know about yeah. the brother called yeah. Bunchy Carter. Okay, yeah, Bunchy Carter. Yeah, Bunchy. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, I guess my experience in meeting Bunchy was was different than, I guess, a lot of other people, you know, because I met him as a, uh, uh, you know, I didn't meet him. I saw him. As as a, as a, as a Slauson renegade when they came to the west side of uh, L.A. because I was I was with a, a a group on the west side that was for Boot Hill the Ben bartenders and stuff like that so that was my like my first thing but what the 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 amazing thing about that is this is that by, he became the leader of a gang a group of association of black people on from the east side that came. And came over the whole city, and it was uh, uh, it it kind of actually it, it it ended gang gang banging and association in Los Angeles for a few years, and then '65 came, and uh, uh, a lot of people got together, you know, and uh, worked together in '65. There was uh, fighting each other in '63, you know, so it was a, a phenomenal thing, and he was the leader of that. So when he came back from uh, being incarcerated for a few years back to the community, he came back with a determination to do something about ending the plight of our, of, of our people and uh, uh, stop all the suffering that we have been going through. So uh, um, him, him meeting Eldridge in prison and then coming out meeting Huey, then Huey getting busted and... He wanted to start the party in Southern California, but he got a more of a, uh, uh, from the, you know, if, when you read the Constitution, it's got a part in that that talks about that you, we have a right to form a, a, a militia. We got a right to protect ourselves. You know, when this government becomes uh, destructive to his ends, we got a right. So we was just exercising the Constitution of the United States. That's why we was a, we were a political party. A lot of people don't want to identify with that. We were a political party. Seeing last week, you know, I, I got kind of political at an early age, and you know, uh, 
I, I liked history, and so even in, in, in elementary, high, junior high school and high school, I, I really could, was kind of up on my history, and I was kind of aware of things. And, then, and when I got into high school and started going to junior college, I started seeing a lot of the contradictions where a lot of the stuff that people had told me I thought it wasn't true about America being for the freedom and democracy and peace and all that. I saw that that was just a bunch of hypocritical lies and stuff, and I started seeing through that. So. Uh, even in 64, 65, when people started getting naturals, I, you know, I was kind of in our little group. I was like the first one to get a natural. And I, I had that consciousness. And then after I got arrested with that civil rights thing, going to get the job, I got more political. So, uh, my brother at that time, he was still not as political. But when we, 67, when we finally went to the, and met Bunchy and we both joined the party, uh, we was like, about at the same level. I was a little bit surprised that he was conscious as he was, but he learned real fast. And because and, I mean, I had been talking this black stuff for years. You know, that was my thing. I always talking about black, black, black. That's why I joined the party so I could stop talking and start putting it in action. Because just if you just just talk and talk and talk and you know it's not followed with any practice, then it's just it's just you know hot air. So, uh, yeah, but my brother, he wasn't really talking to black talk all the time, but I guess he was at the same point I was at because we both joined the party and got involved and, and committed ourselves. And we both <laughs> still committed to the same degree today as we was when we started back then. And like I said, when we, when Bunchy started it, uh, you had to take this mile, mile off. So it, it was a serious thing that we, you know, involved ourselves in. Prepared to die for what they believed, body and soul. I want to start with, with, with Brother Wayne. Can you kind of ex express to him? Because a lot of people got this myth about, you know, what the Panthers was and what the party was about, and they was, had the gang faction. Could you explain to them that this was a, a political movement, and could you shed some light on that, Brother Wayne? Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Well, you know, the original name of the Black Panther Party was the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. And... Uh, uh, you know, uh, it was it was the Black Panther Party was not a racist organization. You know, we believed in black power. We believed in brown power. We believed in red power. We believed in power to the people. But in believing with power to the people, our main aspect, again, because we were black, was black power. So we had adopted a nationalist, a black nationalist. Uh, uh, doctrine, you know, that was basically taken from Malcolm X, who was the leading uh, uh, theoretician of black nationalism at that time. Uh, we want to give you, uh, brothers, uh, the, the last words, because the conditions that, that were in the 60s and the 70s are the same conditions that we face today. There's nothing changed. Right. In fact, the enemy has become more entrenched, you know, as what Brother Wayne Correct. Uh, pointed out, we are under siege from all ends. You know that? We are, are a nation within a nation, a colonized subject of, of, of white supremacy. And there's right. nobody out there beginning to defend this, this community, beginning to stand up and say, enough is enough. Mm. Brother, Brother right Wayne, well, you got, and Brother Rowling, you guys got the last word. Brother, Brother Let me go ahead on because I'm, I'm ready. Because uh, what I want to say is that, you know, the, the bottom line is that uh, we're living in a police state. We're living in a military, uh, whatever you want to call it. You know, any time a country can just go at its whim and declare war on a people and just bomb and kill people for what it, it, it considers it right and wrong, whether it's right or wrong or not. And any time the people in that country just condone this type of, uh, you know, uh, killing and murdering of people. You know, something is wrong. You know, and as a as a as a child, I was taught to hate the Japanese and call them Japs because that was you know World War Two. Then I was supposed to hate the Nazis. You know, then I was supposed to hate the the Koreans. Then I was supposed to hate the Vietnamese. Then I was supposed to hate the Grenadians. Then I was supposed to hate the Somalians. Then I was supposed to hate the Afghans. Now I'm supposed to hate the Iraqis. You know, and and you know, we we living in, in this 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 belly of this beast, and we we can we by silence we condone that. So we have to speak out against that. We have to speak out about this white supremacy, this evilness that we're fighting. And where you know, um, I'm I'm gonna just close on that that tune because I just want to put things on people's mind that you know uh, we're living in a hypocritical 
you know, uh, society. We're living in a, an evil empire. And, and when you pick up that red, white, and blue and you start waving it, talking about you just like your master, then there's something wrong with that picture. And those that want to be and ride and go down with him, fine. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the kind of black that don't want to go down with him. I think he's wrong. I think he's evil. And I think that we need to keep standing up. And, and black people, specifically here in America, got to stand up and speak truth to earth about this, 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 this beast that, that, that is trying to rule the world, which is white supremacy. Right on. Brother Wayne. All right. Uh, I've got a, a take on that. You know, is a lot of times we're our own worst enemy. And the power structure, again, uh, let me digress a second. You know, Muhammad, uh, Elijah Muhammad always used to say that uh, that he's the master of trickeration. You know what I mean? And uh, the white man is the master of trickeration. He can make you hurt yourself. Wait a minute. Everybody in the country got diabetes, and the number one commercial on TV is McDonald's. That ought to show you where he's coming from. He don't give a damn about you. There's no gas. You know, gas is $5 a gallon, and he's trying to sell you an SUV. You know, so it's, 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 he doesn't give a damn about you. You know, uh, 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 the, he floods your neighborhood with drugs and then calls you an addict for using them. He doesn't give a damn about you. So we as a people have to wake up. And we have to turn our backs on certain things. We have to turn our backs on gangsterism. We have to turn our backs on drugs. It's black liberation, you know. And 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 we as black people, we've got a lot bigger issues that we have to hold our mug for. We can't be out there willy nilly because we have black liberation to deal with, and we don't know who's looking at us. And we have to understand that the youth is out there looking. For example, so even if we don't have a job, or even if we don't have a car, we, uh, as the brother said earlier, you're still a man. So you have to, to, to recognize and be a man and be a woman, and you have to sacrifice. The greatest thing we can do for our people is self-sacrifice. If we can help somebody, well, maybe we can't get the biggest house on the block. Maybe we can't get the biggest car on the block, but maybe we'll get a car but we have to be able to help somebody and to include them in our success. As the brother said earlier, we have to help each other. At the end of the day, if we don't give each other mercy, who's going to give us mercy? If we're going to run off in the wrong house and kill five or six people over a a drug deal, who's going to give us mercy out here in the streets? If we're going to kill each other over money that comes and goes, and you can't take it with you when you die. Who's going to give us some mercy? You see, so we can't get caught up in this white man thing, you know, this gangster thing. He puts that gangster image constantly out in our community, in every community. This is how he portrays himself. Scarface, The Godfather, Al Capone, John Dillinger, Jesse James, Billy the Kid. We know all about these people. You understand? And they no good. We need to know about Martin Luther King, Huey Newton, Malcolm X, Eldridge Cleaver. These are the people we have to deal with, people that, 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 that saw the system and might have been on the wrong side of the system but came back, understood that what they were doing was wrong, that the system was wrong, and they came back to the people, power to the people. Right on. I just want to say, Roland Dwayne, I love you. And no, don't that, nobody no, love no, like no. black folks love, my brother. Yeah, that's true. I just want to tell you, gentlemen, it, 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 it was a great show. Maybe, you know, we reached somebody, and if we didn't, we're going to keep pounding the drums. Yeah, right. right that's on. all you can do. And all you need is one. You don't need a that's whole it. lot. That's it. You just uh, need one. Great show, my brother. Right on. Don't take I, just want to, to start. I just want to tell you again, man, from the bottom of my heart, man, you brothers already know how I feel. And um, I, I like how Wayne mentioned all those names, but he forgot to Wayne Farr, Roland Freeman. All right. Right on, brother. Right on. Yeah, I just want to end on this note. 
you know, the struggle continues. And no matter yes, where sir. we are, when we have to throw a stake, draw a line in the sand, no matter where we are, when it, we just got to fight the system. Because it, it, it's, it's parasitic, it's destructive, it's toxic. We're eating the wrong foods, when we're doing the wrong things, we're in the wrong place. When a, if we just let go of this system and start building a black nation, then all right of this on. thing will take care of itself. You know, yeah, and right I think on. that, you know, you brothers, when at the testimony of what you guys went through, the kind of conviction that you had, the kind of determination that you had, you know, and to come out from on the other side, you know, to tell that story, I think that's when we begin to talk about our own history. And this is what this whole program is, it's talking about our own history. Not not some what white folks made of, not the Hollywood movie about the Panthers, but brothers and sisters who lived it, went through it, and still here. Brother Warner, right. thank you again, right on Black Power. Good night. Good night, brother. All right, All right to the people. Right on. All power to the people.